and welcome back to another special edition of the Vulcan Nation podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Barnhart, uh, Director of Alumni Relations. With me today, I have a very special guest here, a good friend of mine, um, and a fellow alumnus. Uh, we're pleased to welcome Mike Pekosh. Uh, he's a licensed professional counselor and owner of Pekosh Counseling. Mike, thanks for being on the show today. I'm really happy to be here, Ryan. Thanks so much for, for having me. I thought it was a mistake when you invited me. I thought you probably wanted somebody else, but I'm very glad to be here. And thanks. Oh, stop it. That's You're too humble, man. Um, but I, I do appreciate you taking out some time. I know you're very busy and, um, you know, so so we appreciate that. And we like to get right down to business here on the show. Um, so, and allow our, our guests to kind of introduce themselves to our, our, uh, our viewership, um, kind of who you are, your background, a little bit about your background, like how you got to Cal U and what you're doing today. Yeah. So I'm from uh, Brownsville, PA, right? And uh, it's um, graduated from, from, from Brownsville High School. And my father uh, was a professor at Cal U. Um, he uh, was in, you, what was the industrial arts, uh, and then it became uh, tech ed, right? Uh, technology education. Right. And so I'm one of the very lucky people that got to go to Cal on a, on a tuition waiver. Um, and so I went to, to Cal uh, right after high school. Uh, my undergraduate uh, time there was from 93 to 97. And uh, I majored in philosophy, which is not quite like majoring in unemployment, but uh, pretty close. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I really love my, my time as, as a philosophy major. Um, so I graduated uh, 93 to 97, and then I came back to Cal uh, for my, uh, my second master's degree, because uh, I went to St. Vincent's in La Trobe first, and then I came back to Cal and got uh, my master's in counseling. Uh, so, um, you know, Cal, Cal U is um, much like you, Ryan, right? It's in our blood, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's the family, uh, like family tradition, you know, exactly. Uh, you know, my dad taught there for, for years. He retired in 99. Uh, my brother went there. Um, you know, I went there. My younger brother went to Cal. My, my, my sister got, did some classes at Cal. Um, I met my, my wife at Cal. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm you know, Vulcan uh, through and through. Absolutely. It's that uh, in your DNA kind of thing. Yeah, know? right. Absolutely. So, um, so, so thinking of that and now, you know, uh, in, with your work as a LPC and, and doing the things you, you do, you know, we talk about um, right now with like current prospective students, you know, Cal U is a place where you can kind of unlock your story. You come yeah. here and you put your time in and, you know, there are different um, narratives that are going to open or different pathways uh, that may be unlocked to you. So, you know, was there any, were there any specific skills or pathways that kind of led to you, you know, going into counseling and, and kind of doing what you're doing that, that, that arrived or maybe that were instilled a, through you, whether it was in your undergrad or in your master's degree here? Yeah, you know, it is not hyperbole to say that that I owe my entire career to people from, from Cal U. I, and I, I mean that. I'm not just saying that as because I'm a guest on this show. And and I can expound on that and unpack that a little bit. So, you know, I started off at, at Cal as um, majoring in pre-chiropractic which I had no business majoring in whatsoever because I am terrible at math and science. And, uh, you know, no high school uh, guidance counselor, no one ever said to me, hey, Mike, you know, why are you majoring in that? I was almost, you know, I was 18 years old. Um, I was 17 when I graduated high school. And, you know, I just kind of picked something out of a hat. I just thought, well, I'll be a chiropractor because uh, they Sounds made good. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't think I was smart enough to be a doctor. So, um, and in high school, I was in like advanced history, advanced English classes. I was taking honors lit and I was in like remedial math and science classes. So why I ever thought, and I had to work really, really hard. I spent a semester and a half uh, in, in pre-chiropractic. So I was taking chemistry, chem one, chem two, uh, you know, biology, zoology, uh, botany classes. I, mean, I was in the science building all the time. And, and uh, just kind of masquerading, really. I don't, I don't know what I was doing there. And it wasn't until uh, the first semester of my sophomore year, I took a bioethics class. I needed a class, um, um, what, were the, what were the degree requirements, right? And, and so I took a class in the philosophy department, and it, I felt like a duck in water. It, it just it made sense to me. Um, and so, uh, and Dr. Barbara Swihart uh, was one of the, 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 the instructor of that course. 
And, um, you know, she, I, I remember kind of the first time I answered a question, she was like, wow, and you're not a philosophy major, you know, and she's like, what are you doing in, in, in the sciences? So, uh, but I, I just, I enjoyed that course so much that I actually ended up switching my, my major. Um, Dr. Hoy was the, the chair of the department at the time, and it was a really small, intimate department. Um, there were maybe, you know, four or five professors. There were only like 10 of us who were philosophy majors at the time. So aside from kids who is freshmen and sophomore and juniors were taking, you know, some philosophy classes that they needed to take, you know, the humanities courses or liberal arts courses. By the time I was a, a senior, man, there were just like, you know, honestly, there were classes like three or four of us um, in a class. It was, it was very intimate. And this is how I'm dating myself. We, we would sit and smoke cigarettes in class. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the mid 90s, because all the professors still smoked and all the all the students, we just thought we were so cool. We thought we were like, you know, Jean Paul Sartre or something uh, <laughs> sitting there in, in NOS and, and smoking. So I don't know if you're gonna have to edit that part out or not, but no, that, different times, you know, uh, different regulations. So absolutely. It was a different time. So uh, but it, it really molded me. It opened my mind, taught me how to think a little bit differently. Um, and then how I got to counseling is a little different. So I had wandered a bit and, and tried my hand working in some ministry and it just wasn't the right fit for me. And so um, I was on a, on, a, on a beach vacation. I was at the Outer Banks and I was with people who I had exclusively met at Cal U. As I said, there's such a part of my narrative. Um, friends that I had been in the fraternity with. I was a, a Theta Xi when I was at Cal. And so I'm on a beach with my, my, my Theta Xi friends and this is um, 2003 and having one of these existential moments like you know what am I going to do with my life and uh, uh, a friend of mine a fellow Cal U grad uh, James Pertel and, and another Cal U grad and, and Theta Xi uh, Larry De Silvestro were both uh, teachers and they said um, why don't you go be a guidance counselor you know you're really good with kids and you like helping people and it was like ah, like you like the light I was like wow nobody yeah why don't I you know it just I, it just worked for two different skill sets that I had um, so I, I went back to Cal uh, for, for my master's. And again, because I had made connections at Cal, I, I know we're going to talk a little bit about people who are influential, but um, because I had joined the fraternity, um, I was able to be involved with Greek life. And I met a guy named Larry Seebeck, uh, who um, was you know, instrumental in getting me my graduate assistantship and got my, my foot in the door uh, in, in Cal in a lot of ways. I, you know, I couldn't have gone back to graduate school if not for the suggestion of people I met at Cal and then people who subsequently um, helped me get back there, including uh, Larry Seebeck, who I owe a large debt of gratitude towards. You know, Larry's name comes up a lot, a lot on this uh, podcast and it's normally very positive. So that's, that's good to yeah. hear that. <laughs> and I say that in jest, obviously Larry's a great guy. and I love yeah. him. So, uh, but it's cool, cool that he, he's a name that, that pops up on here quite often as being influential and part of that supporting cast. And you're right. We're going to talk about that. And that's a good trans transition point here. Um, you know, every good story has a supporting cast. So, um, you know, when we talk about some of those friends and, and maybe other professors or even like maybe a specific class or staff members, um, you know, that, that have helped you along the way, um, you know, whether it was, like you said, on campus during your undergrad or graduate school, or even after, you know, they've kind of traveled with you through your yeah. professional career? Well, I, there's got to be one person I really have to, to single out, and that is uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Jackie Walsh in, in the counselor ed department, because um, as I said, I was an, an undergrad. I had her father, um, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jack Walsh, for in philosophy, and uh, he had retired, I had him his last semester, so he had retired in 97. So when I had come back in, in 03 for, for my graduate degree, uh, Dr. Jackie, Jacqueline Walsh, Jackie Walsh was my advisor. And um, so, you know, I'd mentioned I had her dad for class and so we kind of clicked a bit, but I was initially just kind of focused on, I want to get, I, at the time the degree requirement was a 45 degrees, uh, 45, um, credits, right, for the, for the MED, and I, was, I just wanted to go in and be a guidance counselor, and she really said to me, hey, you ought to go and get your license. It's, um, it's a 60 uh, credits uh, requirement, um, so it's 15 credits more, but you get your license. You can really write your own ticket for, for what you want to do, 
And um, if not for her putting that in my head and really kind of pointing me in that direction, because subsequently I did not become a guidance counselor. Um, I, um, I interned at a, at a, a Bell Vernon High School and they were great and I really liked them and the, um, Jean Lank Lankus, who subsequently passed away, uh, who, who I worked under there. But I, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, you know, being a guidance counselor, a school counselor is very important work, but I realized I wanted to do some other stuff. So uh, if Jackie hadn't said to me, hey, go get your license, you know, push me in that direction, um, I wouldn't have gone into to counseling as I did. And, and now I own my own private practice and I um, have other um, employees, some of whom are Cal U grads. So um, it, it's not hyperbole to say that if, you know, my friends who I met at Cal hadn't pushed me to go towards counseling and Dr. Walsh hadn't pushed me to go for my, my license, my life would have been very different. That's for sure. And not, not in a good way. The, 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 the acquaintances and the connections I made. And again, as I said, Larry Seebeck, get, you know, arranged for me to get my graduate assistantship. And if I hadn't um, gotten that grad assistantship in the student union, I wouldn't have met my wife who was uh, an um, undergraduate um, position in the student union there, so. No, I, and that's, I think that's the, you know, the full circle aspect of everything, right? Like mm -hmm. those little interactions and, and connections create this like avalanche of chain reactions at right. some point and then it all you know comes into fruition as like you said you've got your your lpc you've got your own counseling practice you're employing cal U grads mm -hmm. i mean it's like that's pretty cool to see you know it happen all within your story and, you and know? to any any prospective student or undergraduate student who might be, might be listening to this that, that you talked about like they kind of let the journey unfold you know i, I went in i, I thought i was going to be a chiropractor in 1993 that's why i thought i was gonna be, and here i am an lpc you know um it one it just it's just amazing how when you're just open to going on the the journey and see where it takes you you know i never thought i would pledge a fraternity uh, but it, it made sense for me to do it when uh, in Greek life was very important to me while I was an undergrad. And if I hadn't done that, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to make some of the connections I had that, that helped me later in life. So it's, it's the truth. And that, that Cal U circle stays with you, you know, uh, absolutely. So, well, you know, we like to have fun here on the show and, and not that it's not fun talking about like the serious stuff, but we also like to, to get a, a little, uh, you know, walk down memory lane here uh, on the podcast. So uh, we're going to transition a little bit into the fun stuff, kind of like a lightning round, if you're sure. willing to play here. Um, what's the coolest part of your job? Uh, you know, I get I get to help people. Um, that's that you know I'm in that one of the helping professions, and um, it might seem trite to say that, but you know uh, at this point in my career, I, I've been a therapist now for 15 years. You know, I don't always hit a home run. I don't think anybody does in their profession, but um, often, you know, people are coming to w in painful situations or um, uh, troubling times or whatever it might be, and, and I get to help people. And um, I'm still in awe of the fact that I sit on my butt and make money for a living, you know, and that people get in their cars and they drive and they pay money to sit and talk to me. You know, I'm not giving them a cheeseburger. I'm not giving them a t-shirt. Uh, you know, there's no tangible good that, that's transitioning here. They come and we talk and we share some ideas and, and then they leave and often they feel better. And, and that's got to be, it's, it's the greatest part of my job. Awesome. That's, that is a pretty cool, you know, it's the, I guess the monetary part is probably nice, but also the, the intrinsic feeling, right. Of just being able to help people and, you know, yeah. your, your excellent listening skills in, in practice there, Mike, that's, that's yeah. pretty, pretty sweet to me. Um, all right. Uh, it's a PG 13 show, right? So uh, do you, and I know this is like tough because there's probably a bunch of these memories right. that you have from the, from your time at Cal U, but do you have one, favorite memory that sticks out uh, more than the others when you think about or reminisce about Cal U? Well, for me, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to cheat, but I'm going to say uh, homecoming and Greek week. Okay. If I can combine those and uh, there, there are obviously some, some great parts of it that you and I can talk about off the air, but uh, you know, on the air, I got to tell you, it, it, homecoming was just the, the, the greatest time for me when I was in undergrad and, and, and Greek life, I, 
for me, it just augmented the experience because we're doing, um, you know, you're pumping, you're, you're helping make the, the floats and all of that. And you're connecting with your other friends who are in Greek life with sororities. Um, homecoming for me was just a, a great experience. And then as an alumnus, coming back for homecoming in, in my late 20s and my early 30s is probably when I stopped coming back, re, you know, really for homecoming. I pop in once in a while now again, but homecoming for me is just the, the, the greatest time seeing old friends and reconnecting. And then, so that was in the fall. And then in the spring, when I was an active um, member there, uh, Greek week was this, this like kind of the main event of the spring. It was kind of like um, the Olympics for the fraternities and the sororities. And uh, it was just a, a great time of bonding and having fun. You know, you'd go to class and they'd be doing these um, athletic events. And, um, you know, it, we took it very seriously and we were lucky enough to win it one year. Uh, but the memories I have from homecoming and Greek week, um, you know, kind of stand out more, more than anything else. Awesome. Um, homecoming probably, yeah, I'm right there with you. And, and, and agree. There are probably some memories that I don't remember that we could talk about that <laughs> make for very interesting, uh, other podcast shows. <laughs> um, we're yeah. building the ultimate cow you party playlist. It's going to be released later this fall. Right. Do you have a song or songs? Uh, we're, we're being generous here. Two right. choices up, up to two choices. Uh, do you have any jams that remind you the most of your time at cow you? So again, I'm going to be dating myself here. Remember, I was there 93 to 97. But when I was at Cal in undergrad, there was this little band that started called the Dave Matthews Band. All right. And their first album dropped. And there was this song, Ants Marching. And I cannot to this day hear any, ver I always listen to it anytime it comes on. And I have, you know, like, you know, eight different versions of it, live versions of it on my, my, um, my playlist. But I can't hear ants marching without thinking of Cal U, without thinking of, uh, you know, fraternity brothers, uh, friends from sororities, just, uh, you know, going to the beach in the summer and, and thinking of, of Cal when I was at the beach and hearing that song. So uh, for me, you got to have Dave Matthews and, and probably ants marching would be the, the song for me. That's cool. We That's our first, I'm pretty sure that's our first DMB request. Or, yeah, I know. I, I'm surprised too, but yeah, all right. Yeah. So we will definitely add that uh, to the playlist. Um, continue our, our great debates of Cal U. This is the food one. Okay. So do you have a favorite, and this could be, you can, we can take two, uh, a favorite meal that you ate on campus mm -hmm. um, or favorite place that you ate on campus or in the community, in the greater community around California and other surrounding communities. So, so this is going to be a stretch. And again, I'm dating my, myself here, but um, when I was a, a freshman and a sophomore, the, uh, the dining room was at Gallagher Hall, right? So gag is what, is what we called it. And um I, they made a Reuben sandwich there. If anyone else tells you about this, they, I know, um, um, I can't think of his name, the football coach, I'm sorry, Rick, or um, the football coach. Um, Gary Dunn? Gary, yeah, Gary might remember this too. I know he was one of your guests before. Uh, yeah, Gary yeah, and I yeah. Were there at, at the same time and uh, actually played intramural basketball together. I don't, I don't know if you'd remember, it's been a long time, but um, he might remember this too. They made a Reuben sandwich and, you know, I was 19 years old. I could eat like four of these things I would just go up <laughs> because it was, you know, cafeteria style, their Reuben sandwich, but the best place to eat on campus, um, if you want to like just the best experience was, it was called the Gold Rush. It was, uh, I, I think they expanded it later. It's actually where the, the dining hall is now, as I understand in the student union, but it was a small little room. And um, it was just a cut above, and that also meant the price was a little bit more. And so, I really, only went there when my dad was buying. If I if, <laughs> if I was meeting my dad on campus for lunch, he'd say, "Let's go to the Gold Rush because it was smaller, um, you know, than the cafeteria. There were less lines, and um, it was a little, you know, higher quality, so to speak." <laughs> and and when my it was on my dad's dime, I would go, go there. I love it. That's great. Well, Mike, I, I want to thank you so much, you know, for taking the time out today to join us here. Uh, this has been real fun to catch up and, and kind of hear your story. So, but before we go, you know, we always like to let our, um, our, our guests, you know, leave some words of wisdom maybe for alumni or, or current students that might be, you know, thinking about the field or, or looking into it, um, as well as maybe where folks can find, you know, more information about Petcosh Consulting or client counseling, excuse me. Yeah, counseling and consulting. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, 
hard work is is that you're never going to go wrong with that if somebody were, were to say to me you know um you you were going to build somebody successful and you can make them either really really smart or really really hard working if they have a motor you know i would say g give me hard working anytime you can teach people things I, i've been lucky enough and blessed that i've had some employees over the years now and you know um I, I feel confident I can teach people counseling skills, and but I can't teach work ethic and things like that, right? I can't teach um, a, a punctuality, uh, um, the ability to want to get up and do it over and over and over again. So, um, you know, it, it, the classes are going to be challenging at times. Uh, sometimes you might find your classes to be not so challenging. Maybe it's mundane to get up and, but get up and go to class, put in the reps. Anytime you talk to somebody who's a master in their field, right, they're going to tell you there's no substitution for putting in the work. That's how Michael Jordan became Michael Jordan. That's how Jerry fin Seinfeld became Jerry Seinfeld, right? Um, in anything you talk about, it's, it's getting up and doing the work over and over and over. There's really no substitute for that. Your education, undergraduate and graduate, are going to give you the degrees. They're like the receipts that you need to get into the fields that you're going to be going in your respective fields. But once you get there, there's no substitute for getting up and putting in the work. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about that, I do have some stuff like that on my blog. Um, and our website for our business, where you can find our, our blog or whatever else, is pekosh.com. That's P like Papa, E C O S H.com. And our office is in Washington, PA, and we've just opened a second location in South Point. So uh, you can find us now in South Point in Cannonsburg or in Washington, Pennsylvania. Awesome. Two locations. Look at you guys. Yeah. All right. I like it. I love it. Well, we're so excited to have you again here, Mike. And thanks for talking to us and, and taking the time out. Um, and we'll make sure we link their website here on the on the show too, so folks can find it in the comments. Appreciate that, and Ryan, thank you for all you're doing. Uh, you know, the important work you do for the for the university, uh, you know, um, it, it's great stuff that you guys are doing there. There's a lot of transitions going on, but uh, you know, we're always going to have Vulcan pride, that's for sure. And thanks for all you're doing. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, well, I will always bleed uh, black and red forever. Um, you know. Hopefully my kids will one day too, but we'll see. Uh, anyways, uh, so for Mike, I'm Ryan. This is the Balkan Nation. You know what it is. We'll catch you next time. California.